How are you, gents? I'm Sir Jurex, and this is a Lona review JRPG open world insemination by the channel Sets in Tech. Breed monster, mutate, chip, and marry dogs. Okay, the game updated directly into my working copy. <laughs> okay, seriously, I need to see that link. Google Drive. How the fuck can he put Drive? Ah, oh, does he have permission from the devs or something? He has a million fucking subscribers. Even at the time, probably would have had hundreds of thousand in 2017. Does he even don't care? Like, what if somebody comes after me and you know YouTube being really to, you know trigger happy would have cancel my channel or something? He just figures he's just gonna start another one because he knows he's good, right? If you're talent, you you're not gonna be afraid. Like even if I start another channel, people will realize, oh look at that, there's Seth, and people will just flock to it, just rename it something else. I guess I don't know, but yeah. So let's go this one. I love sets in tech, and uh, <laughs> no reviews are com even close to this, right? Every se and I since I started reacting to this sets in tech channel, no new reviews have come out. I'm just thinking right now. As soon as the notification come, new reviews are. I'm gonna be like, you know, oh yeah, good. like you know, a kid is uh, waiting for some fucking cartoon or something. I'm gonna be like that. Because all sets in tech reviews, especially the latest ones, are incredible. Not just they are great, they introduce me to a whole another type of game that I, I never thought of before. So yeah, that's always one. Seth here. Recently, I've been playing the pinnacle of Japanese culture. A game called Alona. And also okay. realized there are no real reviews of Alona. Since the game is largely played by weebs and man-children. Myself included. I felt this is a huge shame, because there's really nothing that comes close to the bizarre and wonderful world that is Ilona. Ilona is a turn-based roguelike RPG with a lot of sandbox elements. It's also completely free, so go find and download the latest copy of Ilona Plus. I don't know what's happening with the wallpaper, but this could easily trigger YouTube how it didn't do that. And play that because it's fun as fuck. I'll attach a direct link with everything you need in the video description. There's also usually a general discussion thread on JP, and the weebs there know far more about the game than me. In terms of gameplay, Elona operates on a very conventional design style for this genre. You control your character from a third-person perspective, move with buttons on the numpad, and use the entire keyboard to access different interaction menus. If you get a bit scared by that layout, Elona also offers a little graphical context menu that allows you to access virtually every menu by just pressing Z, X, or C. And that's as much as the game gives you. As for the rest, it leaves you to figure that out for yourself. Would you like to be a brawny manlet dwarf fighter? or a horrific mutant that grows an extra limb every few levels and can eventually swing eight different axes at once? Or a snail pianist who has to slowly sliver to his next concert while being crushed to death by his poor choice of profession? Or a literal s who gives cities the sweet taste of nuclear annihilation? All these examples are possible, and that's why people keep coming back to the game, even continuing development after the original coders left for other projects. Story! The game takes place in the land of North Tyrus, which sometimes experiences unpleasant weather conditions in the form of Etherwind. Etherwind is a mild gust of magical bullshit, side effects of which may include random mutations, malignancy, and the progression of Ether disease, which is really just the first two examples mixed together with becoming a deformed abomination. Since the magical wind tumors are magical, everyone points the blame towards the elves. About time someone dealt with these knife-eared f**ks. Anyway... Alright. <clears throat> First of all, JRPG. Does that mean Japanese RPG? Why put J there specifically? I mean, every uh, lots of people make RPG games, different countries. Nobody puts their countries later in front of them. The RJRPG is different from your conventional RPGs. But yeah, uh, whenever somebody makes an RPG game, one thing they should definitely do is put as much as, uh, you know, complexity to the game as they can, right? Like how Space Station 13 is, that's the best example. Like, 
just uh, you know think of all the things you can do and just put it in the game because that's this whole ne- level of uh, you know ridiculous uh, detail this game like he said has uh, that kind of element to it like you could do many different things that's why people are like, keep coming back to it i like it whenever a game is like that because not just that you can appreciate uh, you know genius of the developers like their thought of all this but it it makes you feel the world is alive it's not restrictive because when the game started, games were such linear things. It's like you're watching a movie, but just you can control it, right? That's the mentality of game in everybody's mind. But as soon as the game progressed with RPGs or open world games started, you know, this is people had like, you know, that kind of mentality. Like, I want to break that trend. So game tells me to do this, but can I do this? If, if there are so many details, people love that game. Doesn't matter what. Everyone hates elves, but the ship you're on crashes and elves help you recover and then make you eat the c**ps of a homeless person. What? After giving you a tutorial on the controls, they f**k off to give the king a message, then some shit happens, and I didn't really pay attention because it's all English b**** That's the- The story <laughs> isn't the main focus. <laughs> they, they revive you, then f off to a king to tell him a message that basically describes, what, 60% of the medieval type of games? <laughs> focus of a game. And thank God, because it's some typical anime plot, which can be summarized as this. Go very deep into Emperor Hirohito's crypt, and keep Emperor Hirohito from rising from the underworld, as he plans to reinstate imperialist Japan, and the Liberal Democrat Party of Japan is sh** pants, because after he consolidates power, he'll publicly execute the spineless cuckolds that took US money and sold their own country from under their feet. <laughs> That's as much as I can review. Okay. The game is uh, too weird to be held to standard criteria, so instead, I'll tell you some of my personal adventures and experiences to sell you on it. As soon as you get- <laughs> Sets and text standard criteria? If it's weirder than that, that's just- <laughs> Get out of the tutorial cave and enter the first town, you can choose a starting pet. The options are fairly standard. Cat, dog, bear, or little girl. Naturally, I chose a little girl. Sadly, my little drank from a dodgy well and got halfway through a dungeon escort mission. So I had to fend off monsters, fend off coming out of my little girl while frantically looking through my inventory for something to abort the endless stream of fetuses. Luckily, I still had two bottles of sulfuric acid. Oh. <laughs> the most effective way to terminate oh. an unwanted alien oh. Many quests in this game are randomly generated, YouTube, and it's lead alien, to a great that. deal of hilarity. I received a contract from a town guard who wanted me to get another villager's kiwi through fair means or foul. I found a citizen, offered to trade something for his kiwi, only to find that since the quest had been posted on the public notice board, the kiwi had rotted inside the man's inventory. I traded for it anyway, and somehow this was still acceptable by the guard. I promptly received monetary compensation and extra karma, something that is very useful for not getting f***ed by the authorities. Right after that, the guard ate the fucking rotten kiwi and vomited. My karma sank lower than the amount I gained for doing the quest, as I was an accomplice to food poisoning. Sometimes a villager will ask you to get something for their son's birth. And I bet because if it was a god, you receive way too negative points. Because god, I mean if it's just some normal citizen, who gives a fuck? If it's a god, it's one of us. <laughs> like uh, a broken vase, garbage, a dangerous wand that could potentially maim your child or just... I want to give my kid a of magic missile as a birthday present. If you can send me this item, I'll pay you 10,000. 1032 gold pieces or in exchange. You have six days to perform the task. How about it? Okay. Just an actual piece of the per I want to give my What an asshole! <laughs> I know this is like a randomly generated type of thing. <laughs> <Two thousand. laughs> magic magic road thousand gold. If a literal sh <laughs> I'll pay you 2,000 gold. <laughs> I guess it's not about the thing you're giving, right? <laughs> it's about the emotions behind it. How much the person hates his kid that is ready to give somebody 2,000 gold. <laughs> you have four days. I don't think he needs four days. 
few hours is enough <laughs> Oh my god that's it this game is the best thing ever right recommender just buy it <laughs> parental instinct in this game is great as harming grown adults <laughs> incurs a karma penalty and guard intervention while attacking and killing it carries no such repercussions meaning that Elona genuinely just borrows from the Greek school of ethics where a child isn't legally Genuinely just borrows from the Greek children to rise at the corner of the parents gobble the food and terrorize the teacher school of ethics where a child isn't legally a person unless you survive to the ripe old age of 13 and get to vote when they're 30. The same villager may then ask you to clear the woods of dangerous monsters such as hermit crabs, unlicensed nurses, and <laughs> unattended. Some of the quests what? can even be completely rigged. I've had missions where you need to escort someone's family member safely to another town, only to discover that the family member in question is a trained kamikaze samurai. I didn't exactly know what that meant until I got kamikaze samurai. Kamikaze, kamikaze samurai also considered stronger than kamikaze yeeks, while the latter don't do much damage. This might become a problem for players around the. Okay, this is a game thing. I'm like, is it a literal term? Kamikazes are, you know, the suicide uh, plane, uh, plane flyers, whatever, the pilots, right, from World War II. Kamikaze samurais, what, they kill themselves then, I guess? I'm like, what the fuck is this term? Is it real? But no, this is from the game. As a samurai, I didn't exactly know what that meant until I got ambushed by bandits during the escort. To defend his family's honor, the samurai instantly charged a pack of them and exploded causing me to fail the quest, lose reputation, lose even more karma, oh, and be instantly suicide. branded yeah. a criminal. And if you're a criminal, life is hard. There's only one city in the game that'll take you, which is Durfee. A place with no guards, but many, many prostitutes. You can complete quests here and attempt to raise your karma out of criminality, if is only half of town? the quest givers were actually reachable. Half of the time, the shopkeepers will start openly in front of you, blocking all conversation until they're finished. By the way, there's also a sanity mechanic in this game, what? which for some reason reduces your sanity after using a hooker. Maybe from the rampant bees they carry, I don't know. In rare circumstances, this means that a citizen giving out a quest goes insane and attempts to attack the hooker. However, being insane greatly lowers their stats, meaning the nearly always wins the brawl and kills the citizen instead, <laughs> preventing you from starting or completing a quest until they magically respawn days later, by which time the contract may have already expired and you get penalized with further karma penalties. After much hardship, I thought there must be a safe... <laughs> this is a masterpiece. That, that whole... Somebody should, I guess, post script of everything Seth said as a masterpiece. Just like, okay, look at this masterpiece, what he just said. <laughs> this game is epic, man. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Hookers. First of all, somebody. Hooker. Stats, you know, the karma goes down, his stats go down. He attacks the hooker. Hooker kills him. He magically responds after some days afterwards and your quest fails and you're like, man, this is some bullshit. This is rigged, rigged world I'm living in. <laughs> for a way to make money. So I took to performing music for tips. Getting tips, however, requires that you finish your performance, which is really hard when midway someone decides they don't like your performance and throw a f***ing rock in your face. Half of the time, this is done by guards because killing terrible musicians isn't a crime in Alona. On the other hand, everything is a crime if it's done by you. I learned later how to pickpocket, but as my skill level was very low, wanted to practice on something easy, like piles of clothing or trees. Yes, you can pickpocket a tree and steal it from the forest. Then, as I'm peacefully uprooting trees in the woods, a fucking ghost flies past and calls for the guards to arrest me. Even in the depths of a Fucking ghost flies past and the black angel. He was the black angel. He was the flying frog. Calls for the guards to arrest me, even in the depths of a wilderness. 
If a hideous abomination lurking at the end of the underbrush sees you pilfering a chestnut, they'll make sure the authorities know about your wicked sins. It did. Yeah, all right. I know I'm a ghost. I know I kill people just walking around here, but stealing, I cannot let the stealing is the lowest form of shit. I need to inform the authorities. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to even touch him. I'm not going to kill him, right? That's what I do, but I'm not going to kill him. I'm not going to taint my arms with his crap. I'm going to inform the authorities. That's what, sh what I shall do with the British accent and that fucking mirror. Pay off in the end, though. Did you know you can steal from monsters? Furthermore, did you know you can steal you can. the arm off a mecha and prevent him from fighting back? Allowing you to <laughs> potentially kill the level 30... I remember one of the uh, you know, parody movies, right? What, what are they called? Spoof parody movies, like scary movie. I forgot the name of the epic, epic movie or something, whatever that was. Right? Uh, which has one of the lowest IMDb scores every time for whatever. People hate apparently parody movies or whatever. <laughs> I remember if somebody's fighting, I'm gonna take your arm. Like, now you can't fight. <laughs> I'm visualizing that. Monster and level up several dozen times? It's true. Just don't let him catch you in the act. Or the fantasy Popo will have a word with you. Raising skills requires you to spend quest rewards, but raising attributes is a bit more complex. It's a slower process, since the gains are exponentially better. One of the hardest to raise is Charisma, as it directly allows you to have more followers, servants, and adventurers in your party. Nice. That is, unless you eat engagement rings. You heard me right, engagement rings. Any item that has an inherent attribute bonus on it, like engagement rings which give 5 extra Charisma, will in theory give you those attributes if you somehow eat them. So, you stack a lot of scrolls of inferior material and degrade that metal ring repeatedly until it turns to paper, then into cloth, then into f***ing meat and guzzle on that shit. After swallowing enough meat rings, you'll be utterly irresistible. Even as I was writing this review, Halloween came around in Alona. So trick-or-treaters came to my house dressed as skeletons and asked me if I want a trick or treat. Okay, you supposedly melt rings, make some of meat rings and just eat it. I guess fuck the metal poisoning, right? Just charisma is what I guess he's, he's, you know, having all this liver failure, kidney failure, looking pale spots all over his skin and like, at least I have charisma. So yeah. <laughs> treat. I asked for a treat, so they called the cops. Some days <laughs> later, more skeletons came around and asked me the same question. I picked trick. So they molotoved my fucking house and what burnt down fuck? my bed. Those kids. The karma loss is a small price to pay for their screams. And that's only some of the crazy that's happened to me. Elona is a game that keeps on giving. Much like Chlamydia. It also satisfies your JRPG grinding itch, much unlike Chlamydia, the burning of which will only get more intense as you ignore the symptoms and avoid seeing your local GP. It is very Japanese, so you can either do interesting things and explore the world, or autistically grind your stats and skills to the point where you can kill God. And then the God inside that God. Japan. Elona is a game that defies description and on convention, a game where you can make your own dog, genetically engineer a dog to have more feet so they can wear two pairs of shoes, or kill a dragon by throwing alcohol at it until it's too drunk to defend itself. It's really an experience, and I can't say anything more than go and give it a spin and see if you like it. As always, hope you enjoyed the review. More videos coming soon, and remember, everybody loves Shayna's ass. Okay, so I guess uh, somebody, some some of uh, developers friend just went to him and just said, you remember that term, you can't make this shit up? That's a real term, and I guess he just uh, took offense to that. Man, fuck this, I'm gonna create a game that can fit on any description, and I made that shit up. Because this is ridiculous, whole thing is ridiculous. First of all, I love how Seth's passive-aggressive tone in this whole review. I guess his older reviews were kind of like that. But this whole, I, I've never heard of this shit. Right, I thought it was just going to be one weird, uh, you know, one of those uh, games that Seth reviews, right? One of the weird pawn type of game, like Honey that I just reviewed that got age restricted. 
I thought it was gonna be something like that, but no, this is a great game and JRPG. I should have read the JRPG. I didn't saw that first time. But yeah, all the different shit you can. I, I bet this is just some scripts, right? Colliding with each other, but that just created this gem, right? Uh, th this is Bethesda Game Studios' motto. It's not a bug; it's a feature, but just to taken into a whole another level. They just created some some scripts to work it as an automation, like okay, combining the scripts create this event, but that just went out of the hand. But this is great. Well, I hope they intentionally do did that because that just makes this even more better. <sighs> All right, people, that was Ilona review JRPG open world insemination by the channel says in tech. If you like my reaction to phone, like and subscribe. Check out the reaction under this link. This is in check out the cast. Check out the in What updated? September 27, 2021, five months ago. This review was made in 2017. So after four fucking years, he's still updating the links just so people can have a copy of this game. This is why I love Seth, right? He's the best thing ever. He doesn't need to do this shit. He updated a link in September, basically five months ago. <laughs> All right, I'll see you next time.